Hi guys and good morning from somewhere that I never thought I'd come on a cruise. Now today we are in Saudi Arabia in the city of Jeddah as part of a cruise that takes us from the Middle East back over to Europe. Now, bit of a funny one today and actually it's probably the strangest that I've ever felt coming, <laughs> coming into a port. Now, I usually kick these videos off by giving you a quick look round and then also talking to you about the plan for today. But over my shoulder at the moment, you can hopefully see that we are in the middle of a very, very busy, very industrial shipping port. And I actually can't really see where the city centre would be. It's usually quite easy to tell because you can look up and you can see in any European city, you can see like a couple of churches, you can see a lot of skyscrapers, but I'm not seeing skies obviously not churches but I'm not seeing skyscrapers anywhere here really so yeah we're gonna have to do a little bit of googling the other issue that I've got here today is that my visa hasn't actually been approved which is uh, honestly anybody that's followed my journey from the point of planning this trip will know that I really struggled with the visas for here as have the majority of the ship by the sounds of it now what that's meant is that today it's what is now quarter past eight in the morning. I have got a submitted visa application, but still nothing returned, which is, I've, in all the cruise ports I've been to, anywhere in the world, I've never had that problem. So yeah, it seems to be a much wider issue than just me, which is reassuring for me, maybe not too reassuring for the Saudi government, however, we'll not go into that. Um, now today, for that reason, they've brought the authorities onto the ship, so you can head down to the Panorama Lounge, which is the venue down on deck seven, and you can ask them any questions. So my first question is, can I get off the ship? Can I actually go ashore? Now, if you don't go ashore here, you've got a further six days on the ship before we then hit land again, because after today, we've got our full transit of the Suez Canal. So it, it does mean that you get quite a lot of days at sea all at one time. Now, yeah, for that reason, we're gonna try and get off for a number of reasons, which I'll explain back down in the cabin. I'm not overly impressed with this port already, but yeah, let's see A, if we're allowed off today, and also B, what's going on in Jeddah. Let's go. Okay, so just got down to the Panorama Lounge and what I would say is that this is hands down the most ridiculous thing that I've ever seen on a cruise waiting to get into a country. So you come in over there, there's a massive queue, you then turn around, there's people everywhere not knowing what to do, and then down here, where the entry sign is, there's the main queue. Now bear in mind this is all people that have got questions with how to actually get into Saudi Arabia, it is completely absurd so let's wait and see how long this takes and to be honest at this point i'm beginning to think it's not even worth getting off the ship but yeah let's wait and see right after over two hours of queuing i've honestly seen nothing like that before two hours of queuing where i was constantly told we have no information the visa application hasn't come through you can't go ashore, <laughs> and after persevering, I'll have to turn it, I'll have to just show you the blank side, because otherwise I'm revealing all of my life details. However, I have now apparently got a visa, so this visa was the one that I applied for online for 24 US dollars, and down there at the moment, you can skip the queue by applying for a tourist visa for 128 dollars, which... Of course, you can throw money at the problem to fix it, but my big argument... Of course, there's an announcement going off. That seems to be the... Starway guy, the person in charge of passenger evacuation, you can now proceed right to the back. assignment assembly station. Okay, I think that's done, so we're back. Now, yeah, of course you can throw money at the problem to fix it, but that's my biggest frustration, when you've already sent an application, but they just seem far more interested in getting an additional $100 out of you, which I'm not going to spend that to go ashore for what is now what, four hours before all aboard time? So anyway, 
on that note, let's head off. This is only for exercise. This is only for exercise, let's uh, head ladies off and gentlemen. And explore Maybe Saudi Arabia please, uh, in an absolute this is your nutshell. Captain, uh, Okay, so now through security, I can't show you anything from inside that building because, yeah, it's again very high security in here. So if you saw my video from Oman, you'll remember me saying about how you had to go through body scanners and it felt a little bit strange. Um, I think today just between bartering to try and get my visa sorted slash coming through there, kind of feeling as though you're being cross-examined the whole time, I feel... I do feel a little bit uneasy at the moment. Um, my plan for today, I thought I was going to get off and be able to walk somewhere, but the port here seems really far away. We're directly beside a mosque. You've got taxis, but on the daily schedule, MSC have specifically advised you not to take taxis because apparently they're quite limited once you get into the city. So to avoid that risk, you can see behind at the moment there is the shuttle bus that runs by MSC or from MSC. Now, price-wise, that costs um, like 15 euros return. And usually you will know that my pet peeve is having to pay for a shuttle bus. I will do everything I can to avoid it, and I will do everything I can to just walk to where I'm going. But I just don't think it's worth the risk today because this is just so different to anywhere that I've been before on a cruise. So look, let's get on the shuttle bus, let's head into the city for an hour or two and um, yeah, then I think we'll, we'll just head back to the ship, but let's see, let's see what it's like when we get in there. Where the ship's dock in Jeddah, I've been told, is about a 10 to 15 minute bus journey into the old city. Now, I'm actually the only person on this bus, which I definitely wasn't expecting. That either means that people are already in the city, or it means that people have stayed on the ship and nobody really is using this bus to get in. So, I'm going to be very intrigued to see when we get into the old city, how, like, westernised Jeddah feels. I think probably the biggest concern or the biggest um, nerve nervousness that I have with going into this city is just that I don't know anyone that's been here therefore no one has been able to recommend anything to do here. Now yes you absolutely could do an excursion today but the excursions that I was were seeing available it was things like hopping on a hop on hop off bus or like a quick four hour cultural tour where they take you on a bus and then you stop for photo opportunities and yeah, if you followed the channel for a while you'll know that that just isn't really me I would rather go and explore and do my own thing so yeah, I've opted for the safety of a shuttle bus the last bus back to the terminal leaves the city at 3.30 um, it's currently just gone 12.30 so we, we do have a decent amount of time the reality is I think I'll probably get to the city, just have a walk around and then aim to get back on the bus to come back. Um, at the same time, I'm glad I've got an extra stamp in the passport, so yeah, let's see what this journey's like and I will catch up with you guys when we get in to the city.
Okay, so I am now in the city centre after getting off the shuttle bus and see, to be honest, I feel way more calm now that I'm in here. I think the part of the city that the port's in slash the way that it feels when you get off just, yeah, you feel way more uneasy than what you do in here. It's very apparent that when you get into the centre, this is just like, it feels like any other big built-up city. You basically dropped off right outside a shopping mall that I'll take you into and um, yeah, give you a quick look round. And it looks as though this is going to be a day of just sort of wandering the street, seeing what's here. One thing that is worth noting, and I mentioned this in my last video, but it seems particularly strict here as well, is that I'm travelling at the moment during Ramadan season. And one thing that obviously happens during Ramadan is that everybody takes part in a fast. Now, I obviously hadn't thought of that um, impacting me as a tourist, but one thing that you're not allowed to do in this part of Saudi Arabia, we were told getting off the ship not to eat or drink in a public place, and apparently that was really, really important. So just make sure that if you are coming here, you make sure that you just, yeah, don't come in a position where you're going to be drinking water in the streets or walk about sipping a coffee because you're going to end up getting yourself into trouble. So look, yeah, let's get into this shopping centre, have a quick look round, and then, yeah, explore the streets of um, Jeddah. Right, it turns out that shopping centre has got a pretty strict no photo policy. You also have to enter through x-ray machines to get into the shopping centre, which I have never, I've never ever seen before. So there's all these little discreet reminders everywhere you go. But yeah, this place is um, not on edge, just very security aware, I would probably say. Um, yeah, so one street back from that main shopping centre and the main thoroughfare, so the street behind me at the moment, that's basically where the bus would drop you off if you came from the cruise port. So that big shopping centre that we were just in is actually just back there. Now you come one street back and you end up in these, like, I mean there's so much character in here. These are like the old markets that would be in the old town and they're closed at the moment due to Ramadan opening hours, which is really, really annoying. But you could imagine the atmosphere in here when all these shops are open. Now, the odd shop is actually open, so if you look at this one here, this is obviously like an electronic shop. Some of them seem like actually fully kitted out shops, while others seem more like market stalls that are kept behind big metal shutters. So yeah, maybe this will open before we have to go back to the ship. I doubt it, because what I'm learning is that Ramadan opening times generally mean that places will close like mid to late morning, and then they'll reopen again at night. Presumably because that's when people would then head out and about to go for food because they can eat again after dark. So yeah, I don't think there'll be too much life here throughout today other than just tourists slash people kind of going to and from the mosques and whatnot. So I think what we'll do is head from here back to an area where things feel a wee bit more open and have a look and see what's around there.
you know, I am a lot more impressed with this place than I was with the port that we stopped in in Oman. I think with this one, it feels like a complete cultural immersion. And that's what I would say with generally cruising around the Middle East. You get totally thrown into the culture in a way that I just don't think you do with the Med. Maybe it's just because it's completely different, but I really do think cruising in this part of the world gives you a totally different type of experience. It's a bit like if you do like an Alaska or a Norway cruise, like when you do those scenic itineraries, you get a different feel. And even like Med versus here, yeah, very, very different. I have also just found something that made me laugh. So where I grew up in Scotland is about a 10 minute drive away from, you may have heard of it, you may not have, but they're called Tunnocks and they make things like Tunnock snowballs, caramel wafers, they also make like caramel logs, I think they're called. They basically make, or is it, uh, they make tea cakes. So if I haven't said that one already. Now they are huge in Scotland and I cannot believe that I'm in a little market in the middle of Saudi Arabia and I've actually just found them. I better not take you in in case I get into trouble for taking the camera in with me, but they're up on that shelf there in those yellow boxes. I think they're pretty expensive, so we're not gonna buy any, plus there's no way I'd be able to buy, <laughs> buy them and get them back to the ship without them being melted into a million bits. But I cannot believe I have come all this way and I can go in there and buy a chocolate bar that is literally made 10 minutes away from the house that I grew up in in Scotland. <laughs> Very, very small world. Okay, guys, I need you to look at where I am right now. Let me flip the camera and show you what I'm looking at. But I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. Um, it's almost like a really clever and really different mix of old and new it's it's it is actually amazing what they're doing and some of these structures that i mean i don't know how they ended up like this but the fact that they're still standing is completely amazing i really hope what they're doing here is all these old buildings that are clearly crumbling apart i really hope they're restoring them because this honestly this is absolutely incredible Okay, so my plan now is to just head back to the ship really slowly, to be honest. So I've got about an hour until the last bus, which was plenty of time. And the girl at the port said that if you're in a queue when the last bus goes, then they have to send another one. So I really think, yeah, it shouldn't be, well, it better not be an issue, otherwise I'm stuck in the middle of Saudi Arabia, which wouldn't be too ideal. Now, the other thing that I would say, I think I'm, oh, thought I was at a dead end there. The other thing I would say, which is amazing about this city, the Middle East in general, but this city, definitely unlike any other, is the smells that you get as you walk around here are absolutely incredible. So the spice trade is a huge thing over here. And when you walk down the street, one minute you'll be smelling, I don't even know what it is. I guess it's like cinnamony and like oud and all that kind of thing. It's just, it is amazing. Um, and the next minute you turn a corner and you'll smell something completely different. It's, they've actually got, I'm gonna flip the camera now and show you what I've just stumbled upon. It's like a whole display of spices that you can stop and smell. But really, really impressive. But yeah, so from here, we're gonna shoot back down towards the ship and hopefully get the shuttle bus back down to the port.
So back on the ship, and you know, sometimes you just have to be really bad and really unhealthy. MSC are famous for their pizza, and I absolutely can't get enough of it. So I am breaking the inability to eat and drink ashore with the coldest glass of water that you've ever drank and pizza and chips. So yeah, bon appétit. Okay, pizza consumption over for now. I am gonna head down to the room to get rid of this bag, get rid of my long sleeves and my trousers, and yeah, get into something a bit more summery and chill out by the pool for a bit. So I'm expecting us to sail out here probably in about 45 minutes, I think. So I'll hopefully be back up there in time to show you guys what it looks like to sail out of Saudi. And um, yeah, we'll catch up properly back down in the room before heading back out around the ship tonight. Right, so I am back in the cabin now and ready to start heading back out for the night. So sail away hasn't actually happened yet. I was hoping that I could just go and chill out in the sunshine and then get to watch sailing out of Jeddah and get to show you guys and take a couple of videos and some photos. But unfortunately, I got to the pool and about 15 minutes after arriving, this announcement happened. Inform you that due to the heavy maritime traffic and consequent late arrival of the fuel barge, and in order to finish the bunkering operations, MSC World Europa will leave the port of Jeddah around 10 p.m. tonight. As previously communicated, as per Saudi local regulation, we won't be able to serve alcohol until approximately two hours after departure. We thank you for your understanding and wish you a nice evening. Now, that basically means that we're probably going to sail away without even realising. I have, I have actually realised that this ship, whatever it is, is probably the size of it. I haven't actually felt this ship moving at all. Like, at points, I'm going out the back to make sure that we actually are, <laughs> actually are moving. It's, it's remarkable. I think this is the most, like, motion-neutral ship that I've been on. Granted, we are not in overly exposed waters. If you look at where we are on a map, we're really protected and relatively landlocked on two sides. But yeah, really impressive how you, you literally haven't felt this move. Would you feel it going across the, the Atlantic? Yes, I would be absolutely certain on that. But from my perspective, this last week and a half has been absolutely great from a motion point of view. Now, I don't think I'll be able to show you us sailing out, to, or well, I won't be able to show you us sailing out if it's at 10 o'clock because I'll be otherwise preoccupied, which we'll get to in a second. But just to recap on today, now, Jeddah, you probably got, well, you hopefully got a feeling that at the start of this video, I felt a bit uneasy. I felt really on edge when I actually got off the ship. I think that's due to the, I guess, the presence and the general treatment on the ship just being... Yeah, it felt a bit standoffish, it felt very cold, it felt very harsh, even coming through security it felt very, nope, us and them, and yeah, just weird, I haven't felt like that before at a cruise port. But when I got into the old town, and when you actually speak to some of the people that, that live there and that have shops there, and even little things like when you're walking down the street taking a picture of something, and they're all like, oh yeah, <laughs> get me in the shot, and like, actually having a laugh with you like they are they are so friendly and they're much more welcoming to tourists than I was expecting them to be for a city that's not I mean it's not very much on the tourist map I know no one that's been to Jeddah and when I told them I was going there so many of my friends were like okay well where actually is that let's check it on a map so I was really really impressed with how they've came across 
would I go back to Jeddah? Would I go back to Saudi Arabia based on my visit today on a cruise? Because one of my favourite things with a cruise is that you can sample a destination. If you like it, go back on holiday, or if you like it, go back for an extended period of time. Would I go back to Saudi Arabia? No. Mostly due to the fact that I completely disagree with a lot of their laws, a lot of their rules, a lot of their expectations on society, I guess. So because of that, I absolutely wouldn't go back. But the other reason that I don't think I would go back is just that it was just far too difficult to get in. That visa palaver this morning, that just shouldn't have happened. And that put everyone on this ship in such a negative frame of mind before we even get off, uh, got off today. I went to the solo traveller catch up there before coming back to the cabin to get ready for dinner. And one of the women in there had spent over £100 for a visa before she got on this um, cruise. And she then got to, uh, she had to spend another £100 pound today to get a visa to get off. Which, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense because my visa cost me like $25 or whatever it was. So they just need to make it clearer. If you fly to the US from Britain you know that you need to apply for that visa, that's how much it costs, that's how long it takes, and bang, you're in. Same way that if you come to, well, if we go to any other country that I've been to, like even Australia, when I flew to Australia, you knew what visa you apply for, you apply for it, and within a matter of hours, it's done. The fact that I applied for my visa five weeks ago, it still wasn't approved, finally pushed it through today, but there's other people on the ship that have applied for visas at triple the price, that had to pay more today, it was just far too confusing. So because of that, I just wouldn't entertain returning because they make it so difficult to get in that, yeah, not worth the stress, to be honest. But yeah, I'm glad I got off, got an extra two stamps in the passport and got to see somewhere new in the process, which is always really, really good. Now, plan for tonight, because I'm dead keen to get out and about this ship, plan for tonight is... A little bit different to normal so dinner I'm gonna to go to the buffet because there's only so much main dining room eating you can do and I'm on here for 21 nights I think we're now on like night 11 or something nine or ten of those or nine of those nights I think I have eaten in the main dining room and it gets to now and that's it's a little bit too much if I'm really honest so I'm looking forward to going to the buffet probably get pizza around two of the day just get a bit of salad and then just chill with well, we're not allowed alcohol because <laughs> because we're still in Jeddah. So I'll be chilling with a glass of water with my pizza and some salad. Um, and then, yeah, after that, I have got one of my favourite venues. So um, the immersive show that I told you about a few nights ago, that's back on tonight and it's the ultimate disco show, which I've heard from people who watched it last night that it's very, very good. So I'll take you guys down there. I'll show you the venue, I'll show you the show, but I'm really, really excited about that one. Now, that venue is a Panorama Lounge, which is at the back of Deck 7, and it just works so well. Everything about it just works really well, and the audience just seems to engage with whatever's going on in there. So from a, a review point of view, that venue, fantastic idea from MSC to do that. On the flip, what I'm going to go to after that to show you guys is a venue that I honestly, I loathe it. I don't know, I don't know who's decided to put it on this ship and I certainly don't know who's signed off the entertainment that's in there. It's called the Luna Park Arena and it's not even the sports hall because the sports hall is right up at the top of the ship. So this is a custom built nightclub performance venue, I guess. It's a bit, it's a bit of a weird venue. I don't even know what to call it. You go in on deck six, just along from guest services, and then you drop down onto what must be deck five, I guess. And in there, they've got, they call it like an interactive disco show, where they've got performers that are kind of up on the stage. Some of them are singing, some of them are dancing, some of them are out in the audience. And I haven't been to any anything in there yet that the audience has actually engaged with and looked as though they're enjoying. So I'm going to take you tonight, and I'm going to let you see what goes on in there because I just, I, I can't be sold on it because I've, I think I've been to like five different performances in there and to be honest, none of them have really worked. It just seems like, it seems like another avenue to get the the performers to just get out there and work for their money. It just, it, it doesn't seem right. So I'll take you in, I'll let you see what it looks like and um, yeah, you can maybe make your own mind up. 
And other than that, there's going to be a pool party tonight, so there is a tropical theme night up on deck 18, so I'll probably finish the night up there because I usually go up to the buffet at kind of half 11, 12 o'clock before heading back to bed. So it's going to be quite a busy night, I'm glad I don't have a dining room ahead of me, but yeah, I think let's head out of here, let's have a look at Jeddah at night, because obviously we haven't left yet, get into the buffet and I will see you guys properly down at the show. So yeah, head out the room. That's the end of another night on MSC World Europa, so I'm going to leave you to make your own mind up on that show down in that venue downstairs. I'm not sold, but let me know what you think in the comments. But for now, look, I really hope that you're enjoying this series. It's a little bit different, or a big bit different, to any type of cruise that I've done before. If you are, it'd be brilliant if you would um, consider giving the video a thumbs up, which you can do just underneath. And also, it would be brilliant to have you along on the journey as well, if you fancy subscribing as well. You can do that underneath, totally free of charge, and it actually really helps the channel to grow, so I would really appreciate it. But yeah, I guess that's it for me, so good night from MSC World Europa, as we head up towards the Suez Canal, which we will reach the day after tomorrow, and I will show you everything on the way and when we arrive. Great. Good night, guys. Bye.